Pandora boxes are designed to work with an arcade system or bar top. But today, we've looked through our boxes of controllers to see which ones are compatible with the Pandora 10th. And that includes a handful of Bluetooth dongles. So sit back, grab a cup of tea, and welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe. To test the controllers today, we'll use Street Fighter X and Mario Kart 64. PSP will be ignored as it's extremely buggy with the current configuration. The first controller we have is the Buffalo SNES pad. We can configure it, but in-game, the up on the D-pad just does not work. This Ucom wired PlayStation 3 clone works if you push this mode button in. If it's lit up, you should be good to go. Next up is this wireless PlayStation 3 clone. You'll need to use a USB port with this dongle. But yeah, it's fully compatible with the 10th. These are quite cheap on AliExpress if you want to pick one up. This controller here also works, but you'll have to change mode by pushing this button here. The D-pad's pretty good on this one too, if you want to do Hadoukens. This Switch controller from Bimbok works if you connect it via USB cable. It's quite good except for this D-pad. The D-pad's pretty poor on this thing. Here's our trusty logical pad. This one's the F310, and you can get it working very well if in the back it's set to D input. In X input, it just does not work. But if you want the wireless variation by logical, you can get the F710. Similar in every way, but you get a wireless dongle. Same as the last controller, we need to have it set as D input, and it works pretty peachy. An extra feature, if we push the mode button, it switches the D-pad and analog stick. Great if you want to play Mario 64 with the D-pad. Here's the A500 mini controller. And surprisingly enough, this works with the Pandora Box 10th, as long as we don't need the analog stick. I have the hardest stick. Next up is the controller from the PC Engine Mini. And after setting the buttons up, this actually works well. We've got a pretty decent D-pad, but only a few buttons. If you're playing a shooter game, this might be decent for player 2. But if you want a wireless version, there's this one by Abido. The extra two buttons on the top are for auto-fire. We'd think that the Neo Geo Mini controller would be a perfect match, but even when using an adapter, this controller is not compatible with the Pandora Box 10th. What a shame. And the same goes for the PlayStation Classic controller. But for this, the D-pad just does not work in-game. These buttons do though. Next up is the Namco Joggon. Using this cheap adapter from AliExpress, we do get an input and it does work, but sadly, the Joggon wheel does not get detected. If we use the same adapter for DualShock, everything here works with the Pandora Box 10th. The PlayStation 3 pad works if you use a cable, but there are variations of the PlayStation 3 pad that just don't work. In this case, we gotta roll that die. The PlayStation 4 controller works if we use the cable. We got a premium pad here with one extra. This thing here can be used as a trackpad, so it can move a mouse pointer around the screen. But unfortunately, it doesn't work in games. And the same can be said for our USB trackballs. According to 3A, if you want our trackballs to work in games, we need to get one from them with an additional board. So unlike the DX, there's no hope. Moving on now to the Xbox 360 controller. When it's wired up, we get no signal whatsoever. But when we use the USB wireless dongle, we do get a signal just fine. But the thing is, the analog sticks just completely go haywire. So we're gonna say this is not compatible. Next up is the Wiimote. We can't really connect this by wire, but we can connect it via this Mayflash stick. Not many buttons and not analog, but it works. With this Wii U controller, we couldn't get it working via wire, but using the same Mayflash stick, we could get connection. But very much like the Xbox 360 controller, the analog sticks just go nuts. So coming back to these dongles, both of them were not very compatible with the Pandora Box 10. The S Pro worked a little bit better, as we could connect to the PlayStation 4 controller wirelessly. Worked well in Street Fighter and Mario Kart, but with PSP games such as Tekken 6... Look at this, I'm not even touching the thing. There are also other dongles such as these from Maybe Doe, and these brown dongles work just fine with this Pro 2 controller. This grey dongle just doesn't work at all. But well, moving on to the black one, this is kind of interesting. It's usually on sale with these M30 controllers, and even with no configuration, it went for Mega Drive, PlayStation, and even Nintendo 64. The D-pad is configured for both D-pad as well as analog stick. But if we want to try PSP, no good. He is doing. 
the PP downs. Let's move on to the joysticks. First one here is the Competition Pro by Speedlink. Bought this around 10 years ago and wow, it works with four buttons. So how about my real Amiga controller? This is the Quick Joy something or other. And it's a real Amiga joystick, you can see this. And it's using the USB to DB9 adapter that we made a few months ago. And yeah, it works fine. And we can use any Amiga joystick from back in the day. How about the Neo Geo joystick from AliExpress? Needless to say, it works great, just not in analog. And the Xbox Hori X2. This one just works out the box, it works perfectly. And the last controller, the Hori Tekken 6 stick. This is again for the Xbox 360. And as we're using this USB dongle, sadly, this controller doesn't work very well. Are there any controllers we missed? What have been your findings? If you found a great combination, please tap in the comments down below. This has been Nimi Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!